Happy Respect Life Sunday. Thank you. When you go to the grass gas station today or buy some donuts or whatever it might be, uh, you can wish the person Happy Respect Life Sunday. For us as Catholics, the first Sunday in October is always Respect Life Sunday. We also celebrate this month as Stewardship Month. We also celebrate this month as the month of the Rosary. But without life, without eternal life, there is nothing. And so we pause at the beginning of every month of October to thank the Lord and the giver of life. Many of you have heard that tomorrow evening and on Tuesday at our own local Greendale Cinema, there is a movie showing about Mother Teresa. I brought with me today a first-class relic of Mother Teresa. It has three pieces of her hair. It's a long story on how I obtained this relic of Mother Teresa. I actually exchanged it for a tub of peanut butter in the city of Rome. Mother Teresa, without a doubt, is acclaimed as a saint. Jews, Muslims, Hindus, and atheists acclaimed her to be a holy woman. I remember when I was in college, my junior year, 1997, I went to a college party and they had the funeral of Mother Teresa playing on the television screen. Everyone acclaimed her to be a saint. And her wisdom and how she spoke speaks very much so of our second reading today. This is St. Paul. He's imprisoned and he's writing to Timothy, who is the youngest of the bishops at the time. And he says, Timothy, I remind you to stir into flame the gift of God that you have through the imposition of my hands. How do we ordain men, deacons, priests, and bishops? Through the laying on of hands. So St. Paul is saying, Timothy, don't forget the gift of God that you have. Don't forget the gift of God that you have. And then Paul continues. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice. God didn't make you a coward. God gave you a gift. And what gift is that? Paul continues. A gift of power. A gift of love. And then Paul says... So do not be ashamed. Mother Teresa was one who constantly stirred into flame the gift of power and love, and Mother Teresa was not ashamed of what she believed in. Mother Teresa knew the Lord Jesus in her heart, she spent an hour in front of the Blessed Sacrament every single day. And she spoke with no shame. And she spoke not as a coward, but as a mighty lion in the body of a four foot eight woman. And what did she speak? She spoke love. And she spoke with strength. And it changed the world. On this Respect Life Sunday, particularly in the context of where we are at as Americans, I think we need to remember that we have power. We have strength. And we are called not to have coward, cowardice. And we are called to not be ashamed. We in America are in a very important time in our country's history. Roe versus Wade have been overturned. But that does not mean that abortion has ended in our country, as some falsely think. It means the battle is now up to every individual state and every pro-life individual to defend the dignity of the human person. I'd like to take some of the wisdom this morning of Mother Teresa and allow it to permeate our minds and our hearts. So I'm going to ask my servers to come forward.
Seven's a pretty sacred number, so we have seven of them coming forward. He's going to hold the relic of Mother Teresa. So these are seven quotes of Mother Teresa on the importance of life, which many of you know, and it's really interesting why many of you know these quotes. A lot of you know these quotes because of bumper stickers, like this one. How can there be too many children? That's like saying there are too many flowers. Now, unless you have allergies, can there be too many flowers in our world? Can there be too many children in our world? And the answer is no. At my last parish time in James County, there was a mother and a father, and they had 16 children. When I arrived in Jennings County, all 16 of the children were in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. One of them ran the local St. Vincent de Paul. One of them ran our food pantry, which was different than our St. Vincent de Paul. Two of them were in local government. Two of them were school teachers in our public school. One of them was a school teacher in our Catholic school. And they all played active parts in our local community. And every now and then I would, I would just say, so line up the 16, which 14 do we kill? Our world says now to have more than two children, you'll pollute the environment, You'll destroy everything. Every human being, from the womb to the tomb, is a unique individual created by God. And they are beautiful. And you are unique and worthy and deserve life. And you are beautiful. And Mother Teresa knew this. That's why she cared for the unborn and she cared for the elderly as they were dying. Mother Teresa said, it is a poverty to decide that a child must die so that you may live as you wish. It is a poverty to decide that a child must die so that you may live as you wish. Many of you know that I was pro-choice. I remember very clearly having a conversation with one of my girlfriends and she asked me, she said, are you pro-life or pro-choice? And I said, I don't know, I've never really thought about it. And she said, well, I just want to let you know that if I ever got pregnant, there is no way that I would destroy my college career and the dreams that I have for a child. And I was like, gosh, that makes really good sense. Yeah, why would you give all of that up? I've been taught my whole entire life that college is the most important thing in the world. And so I became pro-choice. Until, thanks be to God, the Holy Spirit enlightened my mind and heart that that's a baby. And just as I wouldn't kill a human being to go to college, I wouldn't kill a child either. Every human being is to be treated with respect and dignity and worth because they are. Mother Teresa would speak to the United Nations. Mother Teresa would speak to world leaders, and she said this, any country that accepts abortion is not teaching its people to love. Any country that accepts abortion is not teaching its people to love, but to use violence to get what they want. What have we see transpire, even in our own country? Riots. Violence. We've taught people to do this. To get what you want, you should even be willing to kill. Mother Teresa is speaking at the United States prayer breakfast in front of Mr. and Mrs. Clinton said this, what is taking place in America is a war against the child. And if we accept that a mother can kill her own child, how can we tell other people not to kill one another? Do we have courage? We do. It's the gift of the Holy Spirit that was given to us. On the day of your confirmation, 
when a bishop imposed hands on your head and anointed you with chrism, he gave you the Holy Spirit and the gift of courage. Mother Teresa said this, abortion is profoundly anti-woman. Three quarters of all of its victims are women. Half of the babies and all of the women. We are pro-life. We are pro-woman. We are in a church right now dedicated to our Blessed Mother. We as Catholics uniquely know the gift of femininity. And we rejoice in it. We delight in it. And we care for the entire gift of femininity. The beauty of motherhood. Lastly, Mother Teresa has this quote. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow has not yet come. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow has not yet come. We have only today. Let us begin. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow has not yet come. We only have today. Yesterday is gone. We cannot change the past. I have no doubt that this morning in this congregation there are people that have the wounds of abortion. Either from your own choice, the choice of your daughter, your granddaughter, a girlfriend, and God's mercy is bigger than your past. Yesterday is gone. And tomorrow has not yet come. To live in hopelessness, to say that our world will never be pro-life, to say that the government can't change, to say that legislators can't change, is all a lie. And to live in fear, that we cannot change the future, we are called to live for this very moment. And right now, at this very moment, my brothers and sisters, we are called to begin a revival of life, a revival of mercy, a revival of healing to those who have the scars and the wounds. We are called to begin right now in Aurora, in our county, in our state, in our country. We are called to begin a revolution of love. That's what Mother Teresa wanted to do. And she knew that by loving individuals with dignity, treating individuals with love, that that would happen. She did not live as a coward. She loved in strength and she loved in power. And we are called to do the same. Let's pray for the grace this morning to do that. Let's pray for the grace to allow the Holy Spirit to stir into flame a great conviction about the beauty of life and to act, to love all women, to love femininity, to love fertility, to embrace women through the pregnancy care centers, to embrace our family members who are struggling, to bring healing to those who have the wounds of abortion, to not be afraid. May the Holy Spirit give us strength and love and power, and in doing so, may we set a flame, a revolution of love. Amen.